understand trade-offs at the code level, I will demonstrate the singleton pattern. This pattern was introduced as a way to share the common state between all components. The singleton is one instance living throughout the lifetime of your application. This one instance is referenced by the other classes. Say you need to create a private constructor to prevent creating a new instance of it. Creating a singleton for this is easy. The only way to get the singleton is through the get instance that returns the only one instance that you could safely share between components. The assumption here is that every time the caller's code wants to access the singleton, it does that via the get instance method. We'll consider a different use case that does not require accessing it every time via this method later. This pattern seems like a quick win. You will be able to share code through the global singleton instance. You may ask yourself a question, where is the trade-off here? Let's consider using this pattern in a different context. What can happen if you use this pattern in a multi-threaded environment when you have more than one thread that is calling the get instance simultaneously, you can have a race condition. In such a situation, your code will create two instances of a singleton. Having two instances of a singleton breaks the invariance of this pattern and you may end up with system failures. To prevent this behavior, you need to add synchronization before performing the initialization logic. To prevent this behavior, you need to add synchronization before performing the initialization logic. Please note the synchronization block. The synchronization block will prevent accessing the, this logic by two threads. All but one thread will block and wait for the initialization logic. At first glance, everything is working as expected. But if the performance of your code is a priority for you, using a singleton by multiple threads may decrease the performance significantly. The initialization is the first part where multiple threads need to lock and wait. But once you create a singleton, every access to this object will need to be synchronized. It will introduce thread contention that is a severe performance hazard. It happens when we have a shared instance of an object and the multiple threads are accessing it concurrently. The synchronized get instance method will allow only one thread to enter the critical section, whereas other threads will need to wait on that log. Once the thread is leaving the critical section, the second thread in a queue can enter it. The problem with this approach is that it introduces a need for synchronization and may slow down the program substantially. Every time the code executes the call that is synchronized, there may be some additional overhead. From this example, we may conclude that there is a trade-off regarding your code's performance when using singleton in the one-thread versus multi-threading context. What is essential? The context in which your code is executing. If your code works in a non-concurrent way, or your singleton is not shared between multiple threads, the trade-off does not appear. But if your singleton is shared between threads, you need to make it thread side, potentially impacting the performance. Knowing this trade-off will allow you to make a rational decision about your design and code. Every chapter in my book will follow this pattern, finding trade-offs of a design or programming choice in a specific context. Once you decide that there are more cons of the specific design choice, you may end up changing your decision. In this singleton example, we may improve our solution with one of two patterns. The first one employs the double checking locking technique. The only difference with this approach is that before entering the critical section, synchronize, we check if the instance is null. If it is, we continue to the critical section. If it's not, we don't need to enter the critical section and we return the existing singleton object. By using this pattern, we can significantly reduce the need for synchronization and thread contention. This synchronization effect will be observed only on startup, 
when every thread tries to initialize the singleton. The second pattern that we may choose to use is thread confinement. It allows us to pin the state to the specific thread. However, you need to be aware that it won't be a singleton pattern at the global application level anymore. You will have a single instance of your object per thread. Assuming that you have n threads, you will have n instances as well. When using this pattern, every thread in our code owns the instance of an object that is visible and tied to the specific thread. Due to that fact, there is no contention on access to an object shared between multiple threads. The object is owned by one thread and not shared. In Java, this can be achieved using thread local. It allows us to wrap a system component that should be tied to a specific thread. From the code's perspective, an object is inside our thread local instance. The logic for pinning the system component to a specific thread is encapsulated in the thread local instance. The new instance dedicated for a given thread will be created and accessible via the get method. By using this pattern, you are removing the contention, increasing the performance. But such a decision will also have the drawback that is the complexity of such a solution. Once we have our logic, we should validate our assumptions by measuring the code. You can find the measurements of all approaches in the first chapter of my book.